Imo State PDP calls for resignation of Governor Hope Uzodima and we can't give Nigeria a brand new constitution, says the Nigerian Senate. Well, this is Plus Politics, and I am Mary Anakon. A war of words have emerged in the Imo state re uh, government regarding the insecurity challenges facing the state and the nation. Reacting to what it termed as a denigrating situation, the People's Democratic Party, PDP, called on Governor Hope Uzodima to resign, arguing that Uzodima had failed to secure the lives and property of the people in Imo. Meanwhile, in a swift reaction, the Imo state government, through the Commissioner of Information, um, Declan Emilumba, said the statement credited to the PDP is the real perpetrators of the chaos. He called on security agencies to arrest and prosecute the leadership of the People's Democratic Party in the state for fueling the unrest. Well, joining us to have this conversation is Collins Opuzo. Uh, he is the Director General of Imo State PDP New Media. And joining us also is Ugo Chuku Nzekwe, an APC chieftain. Thank you very much, gentlemen, for joining us on the show. Thank you. Thank you, my sister. I'm going to start with the People's Democratic Party. You have been calling for the resignation of the governor of the state. Like, um, we all who are watching from out here, we can see that Imo State has all of a sudden become a hotbed of sorts. And I'm wondering, because most of the analysts that, that have spoken about what's happening in Imo State have credited it to the political atmosphere in the state, the chaos between both the sitting party, that's the ruling party, and the opposition. Um, so why are you asking the, press, the governor, I beg your pardon, to uh, vacate his seat? What change would it bring? Would, how would it affect the insecurity in Imo State? All right, thank you so much for the wonderful opportunity you've given to us. The fact on ground is that ever since the governor of Imo State, Hope Uzodema, got the Supreme Court judgment that brought him in, there has been chaos in the state. The people have always come out to express their dissatisfaction and their hard -right reservation over his emergence as governor. But as that was trying to subside, another factor that has been fueling the more or less the legitimacy crisis of the governor, is his leadership pattern. He does not consult. He doesn't listen to anyone. He is autocratic. He has evolved the worst form of dictatorship in Imo State. That exactly has been the situation in Imo. But to get to the immediate cause of this issue, there was a crisis in Olo around January this year. There were skirmishes a community, particularly Omotanze, and the neighboring community, Okoro, had been complaining relentlessly about the activities of some henchmen. The governor never listened to them. He never cared for them. As a matter of fact, the governor had even foreclosed the possibility of listening to the people by dissolving or sacking the duly elected community leaders of town unions. Because the governor came without winning an election. He had no broad base at the grassroots. So he felt that the only way that he could endear himself to the grassroots or more or less control and capture the grassroots was to sack the community leaders and impose on them his own stooges, his own moles that belong to his camp. Hope. Having done that, a crisis was brewing in the communities and the people could no longer complain to him because he had foreclosed the possibility of communication and he had shut himself completely out from every uh, 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 leadership in the grassroots. Then what happened was, these people could not allow themselves to always be killed. What they had to do was to fall back on non-state actors, which was a very bad thing. Because people must, the whole essence of governance is the security of life and property. And when the governor could not come to the rescue of people, even the traditional ruler in Olu said that he made several attempts to reach out to the governor, but of, uh, he never yielded to anything. Then at last, crisis began. And let it be or know that when the conflict in Olu began, it took Hopu Zodima about three days into the conflict to address the people of Imo State. And when he addressed them eventually, he said he just heard that some militants in Olu 
did so 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 ten and that he was going to crush them. First is that he succeeded at misdiagnosing the situation, describing it as militancy without knowing what exactly happened. Even despite the calls by some well-meaning emo individuals and civil society organizations for him to set up a judicial panel of inquiry to find out exactly what happened in Imo, in Olu, he never did that. Eventually, those non-state actors, some people can describe them as anything, but there was an infiltration into Imo state that took advantage of the failure of governance to now start attacking people. So if we trace this issue to its origin, we will know that it actually began in the senatorial district of Hope Uzodema, in his own hometown. He was unable to secure the people. He was unable to reach out to them when they needed help most. Okay. And that was what brought us where we are today. And okay. because both can, can, can I ask a question, Mr. Puzo, if you don't mind. mind? Can I ask a question? I want to come in there. You have, okay. of course, reeled out what you think the reasons um, are for the insecurity and the skirmishes in, in Imo State. The PDP is supposed to be an opposition. I mean, this is what, who you are. What, what, what did the PDP do in the case where the people were agitating for something? What role did the PDP play? Because you're supposed to, of course, highlight the mistakes or the, you know, the shortcomings of the government in power and call their attention to this, whether they like it or not. What was the role of, of the PDP in all of this? Because you cannot also be seen as stoking the fire, can you? Thank you so much. You've already answered the question. We are supposed to speak out when we see things that are not going the way they ought to go. And we have been speaking out. We have been calling his attention to some of these drivers of conflict. For instance, when he dissolved the town unions and gave instructions to the interim management committees of uh, local governments to replace them, I was on air. I told the more people that this was a, a, it was a, a major driver of conflict in the communities. And some people said no. And he rented the current person he uses as outgoing chairman, one Okoli uh, Ogo, joined the issues with me publicly and called me names. Yes, we have always been pointing out these issues. And today, this is where we are. So what is happening in Imo State is simply and squarely a catastrophic failure of governance. The absence of governance. Imo is more or less an ungoverned space. And that has created the opportunity for all manner of non-state actors to invade our state. And today we can no longer sleep. As opposition party, we've always highlighted these issues. Okay, let me go to Mr. Ugochuku Nzekwe, who is an APC chieftain. Um, well, the PDP is leaving this solely at your doorstep because you're the government in power and uh, the man at the top is obviously also in your party and he's being blamed for all of the unrest in the state. The most difficult to digest is the fact that your, a, a high-level party chieftain was killed in your state. Um, but then your governor has come out to blame the PDP and point fingers at them, saying that they are solely responsible for what's happening in the state. How is that? First of all, I want to state here clearly, I am not talking for the state government. Uh, as you have introduced me, I am a chieftain, uh, a APC chieftain. And um, of course, I, I want to tell you that um, if you look at uh, the one my brother was talking, you can observe and see the anger in him, first of all. You can see the anger in him. And uh, that's why some of the problems we're having in this country, we always get it uh, wrong. Nigerians are bad losers. It is only in this country that people will lose the election and say, if it's not me, nobody else will stay there. And they will do everything possible to stop you. And I want to say, for all I know and care about politics, you know, that line, the moment the election ends and the uh, a leader emerges, everybody is supposed to put hands on deck to develop the state, develop the country. But you see, in the aspect of uh, emo PDP, this young man, my friend and my brother, he has been describing what happened in a particular community, meaning that he knows too well what transpired there, what happened there. I'm not even sure he's from there. And uh, if he has gotten all these things, I can put it to him that all these things that he's been describing, that they are the brain behind them because they are just looking for a way to call a dog a bad name. Um, uh, let me say this. You see, in Imo State, 
People are saying that um, uh, a governor emerged through the Supreme Court. That's what, what they always say. If you go for an election, somebody wins, and you feel because you are smart, you go somewhere and write the right result, put that person, whether you put the person in a 10th position or in a ninth position, the end of the day, the, the court sees that the person actually uh, won that election, they will, they will declare him winner. It doesn't matter where you write his name. Because somehow they are afraid of um, allowing the winner even to, even to come second. Because they know that he has a good case. By the time you go to court, the court will find out the, the, what transpired and they will declare the person winner. So trying to write somebody's name as, as number four or number five does not make any sense. What makes sense is the constitution, the law. So he, he, he has gone to court and then they declare him winner. So I believe that if you love your state, whatever thing you think you, have, you would have done if you are the governor, you should come and advise the sitting governor on how to develop your state. Will your Unless governor you take go advice from the opposition if they give it? Because, I mean, I'm just thinking about it. In Nigeria, has there been any precedent where opposition had Listen, made, opposition, uh, I, had given opposition, ideas opposition. as to what they think a governor, Listen. a sitting governor should do, and a governor took it? Will your governor consider if the ideas yes. were brought Listen, to you? Listen, when you, give, when you give a genuine advice, if you, if you always come to criticize, you see, when you give advice and the governor, the governor will have an emo state, has, has a, a listening ear. I can tell you that for free. He is a man that has gotten enough, a, a lot of experience. He has been in the Senate there yeah, more than more than more than one time, and people kept voting him in before he became the governor. So, for somebody who has been in the, 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 the legislature, he has been a legislature, um, a legislator in uh, in the in the Senate, and has stayed there for two times. If his people doesn't, if they don't like him, they will not be voting him in. So now they voted him to become a governor. And I can guarantee and tell you that this is a man that listens to you anytime you give him advice. And he's been telling PDP people, let me say this to you. Immediately after that election, and Supreme Court declared him the winner after the, the tribunal case, somebody from the PDP said that he will make the state ungovernable for him. You see, the truth of the matter who's is this that person? time heals who's, wounds. Who's the person? Have... Can you name and shame? And, and, and do you that's have it why, on tape? That's why I said that. Why is it printed let, let that the person said, said he was said, going to make the state ungovernable? Before the end of this program, if I remember his name, I will mention it. He's a chief PDP chieftain. And the police, we, in fact, myself, with somebody else, we reported the matter to the police and said, these people are threatening this government. What do you do? Unfortunately, the, the, police, the CP at that time was transferred out of Owere. And today, we started seeing all manner of harassment, all manner of feelings, a lot of things happening. And uh, let me tell you why some people will want to blame PDP. You see, this is a governor. He's just a governor. Whether you have crisis in your village caused by anybody, I don't want to mention any name of the people who are causing crisis. His primary assignment is to protect life and property. That is his primary assignment. So nothing stops him from sending people to that particular place to go and bring back peace. But if he's doing that and people continue to frustrate him because they feel that they want him to fail, everything is about 2023. They at all costs want him to who fail. Who are these so people who are trying to... Use... I'm sorry, Mr. Dekwe. Who are the people who you think are trying to frustrate the governor is it the it's PDP? It's because it's PDP, because Mr. See, Declan Emelumba has, has asked the police to arrest members of the People's Democratic Party, pointing them out as the, the people who are responsible for the insecurity in the state. Where is the proof that he has? Who are these members of the PDP? Does he have a list of names? Does yeah. he have videos? Does yeah. he have evidence as to the fact that these are the people who are causing mayhem in the state? You know... You know, you know, when when we when you are in a family and the family is experiencing a kind of turbulence, problem within the family, everybody starts meeting on how to bring back peace. And one or two brothers refuse to refuse to attend meetings. Naturally, somebody will say that they are enjoying from the problem the family is having. In Imo State, we have PDP as our brothers and sisters. I mean members of people as our brothers and sisters. Okay? Economy of the state today. If he starts having problems, 
the end point of it does not know if you are a PDP member or if you are an APC member. When you prevent people from going out to do their normal business, it will affect the person operating the hotel, it will affect the market woman, and that does not, nobody knows if you are a PDP or, or, or APC. So what we preach is every model must come together to assist the government to, to, to bring back peace. However, why one will want to start blaming PDP on all these things? Like I started saying, look at the kind of anger this my friend, this my brother is using to talk about APC. Um, with all these things going on, they, they, hardly, they hardly come out to condemn the way and manner people are fighting on the streets. They hardly come out. Rather, what you'll be doing, they want to cash in on that. They want to say that the government has failed because uh, something is going on and people are having problems in the states. What we had expected them to do would have been maybe to say, please, this state belongs to all of us. Let's come back together and look for a way to, 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 to embrace peace. Rather, they will go there, okay, look at them asking somebody to resign. So, being, is it not, in fact, so, so in your somebody, words, somebody, in, you, in somebody, your words, I apologize for speaking over you, but in your words, being an opportunist in this case, because you're, you're referring to the PDP as being opportunistic, jumping on uh, all the unfort unfortunate things that are happening to criticize the government. So does being an opportunist, and I'm not in any way speaking for the PDP man because we're going to uh, take his thoughts, does that, does that over in, you know, in, in its wholeness qualify the PDP and their members as being responsible for insecurity if they are being opportunistic? Does it really okay, make listen, that call what, what right? I said, uh, you, know, you know, I've said, first of all, I've said before the end of this program, if I remember that name, I will mention it to you. I said a PDP chieftain said that if Supreme Court, court gave somebody, they gave uh, Senator Hope or Demma, the governorship seat, that they will make him a state ungovernable for him. I had that. And like I said, I will mention the name before. That, that, one, is, that, that one is one. Secondly, secondly, there's something that happened one day. Let me give you another, another instance. There's something that happened one day. It was alleged that the governor sent military men to a place to go and kill, uh, to go and uh, kill a uh, civilian. Okay? I have mentioned it to you before. When you send security men to go and kill a crisis anywhere, you don't send them to go and kill. You have you are sending them there to go and bring peace. So a lady, a lady was holding a telephone, a, a handset. I don't know whether that girl was talking was, was uh, talking from her brother or whatever, crying that they killed they killed the brother, they killed the brother. And while she was crying, you know, when somebody dies, naturally. The thing that will come to your mind, oh, I'm going to lose this, my brother. I'm going to lose my sister. You promised to do this. Who are you going to leave these children for us? Rather, the lady was busy shouting about Mbaka. Mbaka, it shall not be well with you. Now, if somebody is mentioning Mbaka, who is Mbaka? What is Mbaka's involvement in uh, Imo state politics? Mbaka's involvement in was he, he put off a prophecy that said, the, the then governor of Imo State, the Mikiola, will be removed, and the whole number will take will take over. Since that time, it's natural that the PDP people have not. Uh, I think we we lost the audio uh, for Mr. Zeke, but let's go to the PDP man. Um, back to you, Mr. Puzo. There's been a lot of allegations, of course, laid up against your party being opportunistic, taking advantage of situations. And who is this party chieftain of yours that has? Uh, that allegedly said that he was going to make the state ungovernable. And uh, like you said to me earlier on, that you have been... Um, he said that you're not constructively criticizing and you're not giving ideas to help uh, the government, you know, push the state forward. Why is the PDP not doing that? All right, thank you so much. My brother and my leader here has uh, leveled a lot of allegations against us, and I have to clarify all of them one by one. To begin with... We deserve to be angry. We reflect the mood of Imo people. As I am talking to you now, people were killed in Imo State today. Yesterday, people were killed in Imo State. The day before, people were killed in Imo State. In their numbers, I don't even know whether I will survive this night because people are being killed on a daily basis. And these killings are not selective. You cannot tell who will be next. 
So we are not going to romanticize, we are not going to romanticize the insecurity in Imo State. We must be serious for once and tackle this problem head on. So it doesn't call for for but his, but, but his his question is what ideas have you brought to the governor to help push the state forward? Do you not want peace back in your state? He has made a lot of allegations. I'm getting to that. Secondly, is that he says the chief ten of our party alleged that uh, he was going to make him most state ungovernable as a result of uh, the mandates which Imo people freely gave to our party, but was stolen through a judicial coup. We don't know who the person is. He who alleges should prove. The only lies on them to say who the person is, and we know we live in an era of technology. They will go and manufacture anything to use to frame anybody. So we don't know. Oh, we're just hearing it possibly for the first time. I think I had it earlier today from the Commissioner for Information, and I'm hearing it for the second time. So we don't know. Our party is that we don't even have catapults in our secretariat. We don't have knockouts. How can we cause insecurity with our pen and our smartphones and laptops? How? So they are just confused. Let me tell you one thing. Eh? Who of them came to power without one line of agenda, without any manifesto? Before the governorship election in 2019, there were three debates in Imo State. Those of them never participated in any of them. Number one was the one that BBC organized. They never participated. The second one was the one that Imo Community in Europe organized at Rockview Hotel. He was never there. The third one was the one that Imo Elders Advisory Council organized at Kato. He wasn't there. So he never debated Imo affairs. He never engaged in any meaningful conversation to know what the problems of Imo State were and are and how to go about solving them. So he was suddenly thrown up through a judicial coup, and he came to Imo State and felt that he was going to govern the state through fiat. If you listen to the statement that even the governor issued today, he conveyed the meeting of traditional rulers and was clearly warning them that if they don't submit to him the names of criminals in their communities, he was threatening them literally that they must go and fish out the, the criminals in their community and bring to him. Is that how to govern the people? Threatening our royal fathers? That they must be um, Okay, how, how would a traditional ruler know criminals? Is he a justice in chief? Is he a court? No one is a criminal until have you been tried in a competent court of law. So <laughs> his style of governance is setting the state ablaze. That is what is going on. And the killings here can never, ever, ever be toyed with. They can never be romanticized. It's real. And it's happening. Then getting to our, our interventions, let me tell you the truth. It is the government of the day that sets the tune of politics. If you have a government that has decided never to listen, if you have a government that has defined itself by its opposition to any wise counsel, if you have a government that has made it a pastime to blame everything on the opposition, if you have a government that has a history of incarcerating vocal voices, we are helpless in Imo State. We can't do much. Therefore, what we have decided to do is that most of the much will be eased out. If we had a functional House of Assembly, that should have been their work to quietly ease him out because the style of governance has set him on fire. That's what, our position. What as will the party. that solve in um, the interim? I think I asked you that question earlier on when you didn't answer me. Easing out uh, the governor is, at, in the middle of his tenure, <laughs> what will that solve? How will that solve the insecurity in the state? Because, like, like the, P, the APC man said, Whatever the situation is, it's affecting both APC and PDP. It doesn't know what party you belong to. So easing the governor out of office, what does that change? What change does it bring in the interim? What kind of sucker does it bring in the interim? I would like for him to answer. I would like Mr. Puzo to answer this question, please. It brings a change. It brings us with a glimmer of hope and the possibility of a leadership that may engage with the people in solving this problem. In the interim? Because... What it brings us is the prospect of having a leadership that may engage with the people in solving this problem. Because as it stands now, Uso Dema does not engage with anybody. He doesn't let anybody. He's only issuing threats, issuing orders, threatening to jail, to men, to do this. Is that how to govern the people? So we can't bear it anymore. Okay. We are all faced with a very dire situation, and we need a leadership at this point. Okay, I'm going to go back to Mr. Nzekwe. Um, um, yesterday on, uh, on our news uh, bulletin, we had um, a, me um, a member of the House of Representatives calling out the, the police, saying that they're killing his constituents on a daily basis and saying that these people are killers or that they were responsible for the death of some persons. And he's saying that his people are being unjustly killed on a daily basis. 
What is the governor of a state doing if people are randomly being killed under his watch in the guise of, well, the police is trying to uh, get the people who killed a certain person? Where is the due diligence here? Where is the rule of law? In, and, and, and I mean, the modus operandi of the police in this regard is a bit confusing and blurry. And if a member of uh, uh, representing a constituency is calling out the police force, there's obviously a problem, isn't there? Um, uh, first of all, let me uh, acknowledge here that um, we have crisis, not only in Imo State today, but in uh, some part of Nigeria, if not everywhere. And um, it's not only peculiar in Imo State. There are a lot of agitation. Um, Imo State is not left out. Uh, some of these agitations are real, some are correct, some are not. But you see, when you want to triple it down to Imo State and what is happening here, my brother, since you've been asking him question, you can see that high level of anger still in them that it was caught that gave Senator Hope of the moment, that office. They are still angry about it. They don't want to see anything good in him. And that's why I'm up to you today, they are still calling on him to resign. So I want to say clearly that these people who are this anger, uh, this angry, they can do anything to create problem for you to feel that the state is not doing well. Let me give you one example. You see, I have mentioned that somebody was crying with um, a handset of a man that was shot. I'm so sorry, Mr. Nzekwe. I'm going to, I'm, of... I'm going to, because we're out of time, I'm going to ask my question again. A certain member of the House of Representatives in your state has been saying that people are being killed randomly and these people are his constituents. What is your government and the governor of your state doing? That's the APC, member. I'm, I'm, I'm certain member. that this person obviously also is a member of your party. What is being done to deal with the number of people that are being killed under the guise of the police trying to put an end to insecurity? Innocent lives, according to that member of representing, uh, I can't remember the, the constituency, he, he, he con con now. constantly he, accused as, the police of killing innocent people. Is that not also part of the problem? You're trying to end insecurity, but then you're killing innocent people, allegedly. What is being done about that? Nobody... Nobody, nobody, I can tell you that the government of APC in Imo State is not killing any innocent person. Well, he didn't say the government. Because he didn't say it was the government. First, he said the police. All, first of all, first of all, they are not. Let me tell you why. Let me tell you why. I have told you before that the primary, the primary um, uh, uh, assignment of a chief security officer, whether at the government level or at the state level, is to, pro to protect life and property. If you hear that there's a problem in uh, Imo State University, for instance, and the governor is informed, if he sends his men to Imo State University, it's only to protect the students there. But if somebody that is very funny is behind that particular thing there, somebody that wants to remove the government is behind that particular ad there, somebody that does not like the governor, somebody that does not like APC is behind it. By the time you send anybody there, they may even create more problems for you to say that the governor um, sent people to go, to go and kill. Do you know that most of the people who kill, who kill people outside are not trained, not trained soldiers or trained police? Between a trained police officer and somebody that did not go through any major training, who do you think that will make, that will make mistake using gun? And if governor wants those students to be killed, there's no point sending security to that place to go and, to go and help them. He will, if as well allow them to die, but because he loved these people, if this, if my my friend is talking that hope does not, uh, this, the governor of Timothy does not consult, he does not allow people that is autocratic. He is lying. Okay. I know this governor. I know this governor too well. And when you say a federal member of the house is saying that these people are being killed, we do not know who is killing the people. Well, I'm talking about the people of Benin. If, if somebody um... wants the governor to be removed, the person can do anything for that governor to be removed. It well, didn't kill well, people. Well, we have to go. I want to say thank you to you. Collins, Collins Opuza is the Director General, Emo People's Democratic Party, New Media. And Uzo, Ugo Chuku Nzekwe is an APC chieftain in Emo State. Thank you very much, gentlemen, for being part of the conversation. Unfortunately, we have to go now.
Well, thank you all for staying with us. We'll take a short break and uh, when we return, we'll look at the possibility of having a new Nigerian constitution, even though the National Assembly is saying they cannot give us one. We'll be right back.